because we have Dave McGrady. He's one of the experts from Ford Motor Company who is working on, uh, on some of the possible solutions for one problem that we all face while we're driving, which is when we arrive to our destination, which is parking. How are you, Dave? Hey, Javier. How are you? Nice to be with you. No, thank you very much for your time and uh, for sharing, especially all this information that uh, Ford is developing. So we have a big, big, big problem huh, with uh, parking cars around the world, pretty much. It seems that every city is growing. I, I, I have a chance to travel a lot, and uh, everywhere I go, here in the States and overseas, I mean, the parking situation is getting worse and worse by the minute, it seems. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's the same thing that we see here. I mean, it's certainly a problem that those of us who drive, you know, experience it almost on a daily basis. And, and as you mentioned, um, I mean, parking... Uh, is probably even worse beyond the U.S. Uh, in some other countries that uh, have even more uh, congestion uh, than than here. So, one of the things that we are trying to do at Ford is to to look across the globe and to just to think, you know, what can we do as an auto manufacturer um, to help resolve this parking issue? And this parking project that we'll talk about here is is one of the the things that Ford thinks it can do to, to help help the uh, the issue yeah great so can you uh, go through some of the numbers to identify the problem or to explain more like in a black and white what the problem is yeah sure so you know the, the part of Ford that I work at is in sustainability and so we look at the footprint of our products uh, the footprint of our manufacturing processes um, to try to to make them all more sustainable and so from a uh, product standpoint, our vehicles, you know, not only um, the, the fuel economy and things like that, but just how they're used. And when you look at a, a vehicle's CO2 emissions, um, we've realized that a lot of that, or a significant percentage of that, comes when uh, people are just driving around uh, a city, typically an urban area, uh, hunting for a spot to park their car. And if they would be able to just um, be informed of where open spots exist and they could drive directly to them, they would waste a lot less gas, they would emit a lot less CO2, and from a personal time standpoint, they would save a lot of their own personal time not having to hunt for parking. And there have been, been many studies that have been done uh, that quantify uh, you know, when you when you roll it up to a national level, how much yeah. uh, CO2 uh, it could be saved and gallons of gasoline could be saved. So we, we started to take a look at those sorts of things. And, you know, as you might be aware, Javier, there are many uh, parking assistance applications available today uh, that you can download to your uh, mobile device um, that help with, uh, with parking. And... So it's not like there are a lack of um, assistance programs out yeah. there, but what we recognized at Ford is that the data that is supporting those parking apps uh, is, well, I, I think it, it's fair to say it's a little bit scarce, meaning that a lot of these apps work from uh, data feeds that are coming from sensors that have been uh, built into the pavement. So each parking spot has a sensor in the pavement to to detect whether the car, a car is parked okay. uh, over it. Um, that, that's one way of detecting open parking spaces. Another way would be to use cameras, whereby in like a parking lot up on a light pole, you might have a, a video camera mounted and that camera has uh, software behind it that can do image recognition to determine whether or not there are cars parked in the spots that are within the field of view of the yeah. camera. And, and the data that comes from those sensors is very good. Uh, however, uh, it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of it. And so from a, from a perspective of a city or a municipality or if you own a parking lot and you have to invest a lot of your money to put these sensors in the, in the ground or these cameras up on a pole, uh, there's a significant cost associated with that. And what we recognized at Ford is that we already have sensors that are on our vehicles. Um, these sensors are used for uh, production features uh, such as 
as uh, lane keeping. Um, I don't know if you're aware of uh, many Ford cars have hands-free parking where it helps you yeah. parallel park. Yeah, absolutely. Vehicle, yeah. Right? Think, things like that, uh, blind spot detection, adaptive cruise control. These are just many features that are out there today. And, and frankly, uh, it's not just Ford that has these. Many auto manufacturers have them. And so these sensors that are built into our vehicles that do this object uh, detection around the vehicle can be used also to sense whether there are cars parked in parking spots that you'd be driving by as you circle a parking lot. Yeah. And so, uh, so that's really the big idea here is that we're, we're using technology that's already deployed in our cars and it could help to solve this data scarcity issue behind the parking apps without putting the onus of more and more cost onto cities and infrastructure owners. Yeah, so I see some from some of your stats that people uh, ride, they drive around 20 minutes hunting for a parking spot and that adds about 70 million use of a, a waste of the use of a car every year. And 60% of drivers have decided against an activity because they couldn't find a parking. You can count me in that one because I live in Miami and if I'm going to Miami Beach, I have to think about like, okay, let me think. They're going to be parking, parking, uh, ballet parking for $35 or I'm going to drive half an hour to find a spot. And sometimes that I, I'm not going to deal with that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and, and, you know, those numbers that, that um, you saw right there, uh, We've been using those numbers um, that were available on the web through um, studies that have been made public. Um, so, you know, so those aren't Ford numbers specifically, but have been, um, you know, well researched and, and well known from other sources. And like you said, I mean, there's a big economic impact here where if you're going to decide against doing an activity because you don't think it's very likely you'll be able to find a convenient parking spot, then you know, there are, there's a ripple effect here that not only just you're being inconvenienced and it's a hassle for you to park your car, but uh, business owners and, and um, event planners and things like that are going to start to see revenues fall because you're just not going to those things anymore. Yeah, it has a, a big domino effect. So uh, you're talking about um, utilizing infrastructure that is already, I mean, like systems that are already in the car. Because uh, it seems like the the automotive industry is way ahead of the infrastructure and the, actually the legal issues in some cases, or like the setup for the legal issues. So this is a, a pretty smart solution of, of using what is already there. Yeah, we, we think so. Like I said, it, it seems to be very cost effective. Um, the the technology that we're using, like we just said, is, is already in our vehicles. So um, we're not really inventing anything new. Um, you know, I mentioned at the beginning that this is an experiment, so we're still doing yeah. some testing. And, you know, there, I wouldn't say that this is is production ready yet um, in terms of, so what, let me back up a second. What we did is we, we have access to this data stream that um, from these sensors on the vehicles and what what our team did was to write some software. And the software interprets this data stream to be able to make sense of it, to say, yeah, it looks like there's a spot that's open, or no, there's an object parked in that spot. And so we would, we would um, you know, call that spot um, occupied. Yeah. And so th there's some refinement still that we were working on this year that would need to happen with that. But generally speaking, um, you know, all the tools are there. And uh, it seems like this would be a, a great way to resolve this data scarcity issue. Yeah, we're talking to with Dave Magritte. He's one of the experts of sustainability at a Ford Motor Company, talking about the huge problem about parking uh, everywhere in the world. So, Dave, is there any cooperation between car manufacturers to share these kind of uh, technologies and development of the systems that are already in cars? That, that's a great question, and, and that's that's actually one of the the prime um, things that we're taking a look at this year. Um, you know, I mentioned a few minutes ago that uh, that many auto, auto manufacturers' vehicles have this technology on them. And, you know, you might recognize that, hey, it's kind of neat if, if these cars can sense open parking spots as they drive around. But if the big picture uh, here is that we want to uh, help fill in a lot of the data, uh, 
to, to fix this data scarcity issue. It's not going to work very well if there's only one or two cars yeah. driving around a city that are doing this. What we need are, are th- hundreds and thousands of them. And, and frankly, it would be better if it wasn't just Ford vehicles doing it, but it was GM and Toyota and Honda and BMW and, and everyone, frankly. And so um, we are going to start um, exploring that possibility this year where if we could do some partnerships with some other companies um, so that, you know, it's basically kind of a strength in numbers thing, right? Absolutely, would, yeah. Yeah, we, we would start pulling in more and more vehicles, and uh, when you aggregate all that data, it would be for the benefit of, of the greater good for people trying to find parking. Well, excellent. Uh, great information, David McCready, expert in sustainability at Ford Motor Company. Thank you for your time and sharing this information. Very interesting, and uh, hope to, uh, that this works out uh, pretty soon, because when the next time I go to Miami Beach, I want to be easier for me. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Uh, thank you very much. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.